Hi everyone and thank you for joining us here in the Fish Easy Fish Room where we have many tanks of breeding fish and we sometimes use microworms. So here's a culture that I have established and it's getting a little soupy. So what we're going to demonstrate today is how to restart it but also more. We're going to show you how to get many of the microworms onto out of the media and without taking up a lot of the media into a form where you can actually administer it to your fry. This is a little trick I've picked up and I do want to share it with you. This is of course one that has been just restarted. This is a brand new one and we're going to show you how to do this. So stick around, watch the whole video and enjoy. If you want to like and subscribe, that would be a great benefit to the Fish Easy channel and those who even become members can become members to new special videos for just them. So enjoy the program right now demonstrating how to culture and how to restart cultures with microworms. A culture that has been in existence for you know, at least uh, six weeks or more and you can see at some places where the worms have started to crawl up the sides. Harvesting microworms is easy by just taking a swab and then dipping the swab after you've wiped them off from the sides to avoid getting any of the medium in there. However, there is another method when they're not on the sides and what I use. This is my culture that's been, as you can see on the surface, tons and billions and billions of actual little, excuse me, uh, little worms that are just essentially wiggling there. So I take a piece of paper towel. This is not the kind of paper towel that you would find in like the real absorbent kind. This is more like a paper paper towel, the kind you would find maybe in a bathroom of a public place. That kind, look for this kind of paper towel and get a roll of it. it just cut a strip like I have here, just cut a strip and this will absorb but it won't it won't absorb too much. So that's the good thing about it. So I'm just going to take it and lay it down and I'm going to put it on the top of the medium and I'm going to let the moisture just absorb throughout the paper towel. Then I'm going to slowly lift it back up. In so doing, I now have an, a, a paper towel that's wet, but you'll notice that it doesn't look like it picked up any of the medium. So what I do is dip this now. I have a container, excuse me. I have this container of water. It's, this is a little half pint. And then I'm just going to put it into the, into the container and just sort of rinse it out. Dip it a few times. And now I have extracted the worms that got sucked onto this paper towel. I can discard this now. And the solution, if you can see the solution, and it might be better with a light. Let me grab my light. See if you can see the, the amount of worms. You might be able to see them there. There is little bits of other matter. Well, actually those are drops on the on the container, but let's see if I pull it away. Yeah, you can see all the worms. That's an example. Now this is fresh water, dechlorinated water in this little container, and it's got billions of these microworms, which will eventually settle to the bottom. So it's good for use with types of, I would use this with types of uh, fry that actually are not needing to have the fry or the worms in mid midstream or in mid water. I can use them with catfish especially, corridors and other catfish that like to feed off the bottom. That would be ideal. However, this is uh, now ready for a baster and I can go around either pour it or just use a baster to feed the fry. So I wanted to show you that quick way of harvesting. But now the question has come up, what happens when you take your microworms and you want to start a new culture because after a while these this will start to go bad the smell might start to become a little stronger and what do you do well what i'm going to do is i'm going to take another container 
and in this case this is the container I'm going to use and uh, it's the same size as this one actually this I believe is a um, uh, I think it might be a two liter it's a two liter container and what I need to use is a medium the medium I always select is freeze-dried potato flakes freeze-dried potato flakes it's like instant mashed potatoes instant mashed potatoes can be bought at your local store I have found that the best ones are without the flavorings and stuff and I got pure in the bulk section of bulk barn and uh, I was told recently they don't carry it anymore but someone still makes it <coughs> excuse me obviously so just be on the lookout for um, freeze-dried or mashed potatoes instant mashed potatoes take one cup this is a one cup measurement and we'll put one cup in there I'm actually using twice as much as I did in this particular one because I'm giving it a try right now you can use a half cup if you want and uh, then I need to sprinkle the water in there I use one I'm going to use the half liter or I guess half half quart this is uh, a half liter half liter of water okay and it looks like for example it looks very soupy so I put it in there you see how soupy it is but take a spoon and if you have something to stir that's immediately going to give you get this over here this is a I'm just going to take this spoon to see if we can see it I'm going to take this spoon it, it, it first it starts to absorb starts to absorb and starts to absorb until it becomes like mashed potatoes you want the consistency to be the same as mashed potatoes if you got too much water you can add a few more flakes if you got not enough water you can add it but be careful adding too much so what you can do is be sure to stir it up let it let it sit just for a few seconds and while it absorbs so don't be too hasty in adding water because you don't want it to be too soupy the reason is because once the worms take over it will become a little soupy like this this batch here okay so I'm stirring in I've got one cup of the actually that I use a scoop I just have a scoop in here whatever you have measured out this is my scoop it's a um, it's none other than a, a fish food container but it's a half a cup so two of those or one, I use a measurement measurement for you and show one cup so I'm look finished I just sit a second or two as we're talking and I think it's ready so it looks perfect it looks like mashed potatoes uh, it's not heated and you could probably and you, this is what you would eat you just put hot water and then that's what it's designed for and you got instant mashed potatoes for your dinner but I use the mashed potato mix the flakes because other people if you go to the internet you'll find all kinds of different ways of doing microworms but what I find is that this method actually works very well because this method does not produce as strong of a foul odor as other mediums and uh, that would be something for you to consider so if you want to try other mediums you're welcome to you can try the, the oatmeal oatmeal method and there's so many different people who have put out different ways of doing this so you can check it out on YouTube I don't, um, I don't uh, deny that they have a lot of benefit too, uh, learning how to do it in different ways. Maybe you will not be able to find instant mashed potatoes and you have to use oatmeal. Okay, that may be the case. Now, I kind of flatten it out. That's what I do. I flatten it out and make it kind of flat. So you can see here what it looks like. It's just kind of flat. It's, it's, it's not liquidy anymore. It's kind of absorbed everything. So I try to get it off the sides um in the size a little bit because eventually they're going to start crawling up when we first start taking over the the medium next thing i do is we put yeast and this is um my yeast it's actually bread yeast for baking and the kind that i like to use is the kind that is for 
uh, bread machines. You can buy them like regular yeast and it looks like good look at it see if you can see it this one kind of looks like looks like a little granule it looks like little um, pellets not pellets not round pellets but oblong and the the ones that are regular are kind of like more like round balls but these this is more I like to use the bread machine one because it's the same price so I buy this one because it absorbs in water it um, melts into the water as it were uh, much easier and I leave the other ones and I just sprinkle it a good amount not keeping but just kind of spread it throughout the on the surface okay so now what I need is culture starter you can't just expect worms to grow without a single worm to start with so it's a concept that a lot of people have asked about uh, in different cultures, yes, you need a starter. You've got to get it from somebody. You can get it uh, from me or from some local person in your club. But uh, now that I've spread it out, you can see the yeast is on the top. I will never need to actually eat and add more. I will start a new culture before I actually have to add more yeast or, or media. Now, to get it started, I'm going to just take my spoon and I'm going to, if you can see this, I'm just going to scrape along the top where all those worms are. Now I have a spoonful of it. I'm just going to dabble it across the surface on this one. So take your starter, whatever you have, put it in there. All you need is a, a drop of them because there's so many thousands inside. Okay, I'm just going to put like three all I need to start it and I'm just going to take these three once I put them on the surface I like to just kind of swirl them in just on the surface just kind of go back and forth with my because they're all clumped up right I put it I just kind of dabbled them on there I just kind of swirl them and then kind of flatten it out it just kind of puts the yeast right on the top surface of the media and that's it I am now ready. I use a um, lid on top of this now, so you'll want to put a lid to keep the odor from escaping. And there we go. We can put a lid. And then once, uh, once you put the lid, okay, um, that's that's the lid for this one. It's no wonder. So you put the lid on, on your container, and then you can poke some very tiny holes. And to keep insects out, uh, what I have also done since I don't have a simple method of poking a lot of holes, sometimes people heat up the end of a needle and, or pin, like a sewing pin, and just, just heat it up and then poke a bunch of holes. I, I've even tried this. I will create a hole with my drill, just the smallest drill bit I have, boom, 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 and then that's too big, of course and then put a piece of tape over it and then poke a smaller hole in the center of the tape. Any, any uh, worm that tries to get across to the hole actually will get stuck on the tape anyway so that will stop any uh, escapage. So, so that, that's, that's probably another method of doing it. So just poke a tiny little holes for oxygen exchange and you've got yourself a uh, producing... you'll produce more out of this than you'll ever need. As you can see, just from one little dipping of a paper towel, you were able to get a, a thousands and thousands of microworms. And you don't want to overfeed. Be careful not to put too much into you with your fry because they only eat what they can eat. And then if the uh, remaining microworms, which will stay in the water for up to a couple of days, they will die off. And then you'll have a mess on your hands with a bunch of dead worms. So that's the thing to watch out for. So I hope that was helpful. This is um, um, how to redo a start a new batch and this one is ready to go. I would imagine in 10 days or within a week I will start to see the multiplying worms crawling up on the sides 
and then I can take my finger just like this and wipe them and get a bunch on my finger and then to dip that into the container of water or like I showed you when they're not on the sides you can use the paper towel trick and get them out so I hope that was helpful and enjoy your microworms and if you have any questions of course I answer them here at Fish Easy just leave your comments below or contact me on the contact page